Hello and welcome to my channel. Today a little different topic than the usual tutorials, but if you watched my previous video, then you know I am launching my small business this year. And for those of you who also plan on maybe taking the same step, or if you're nosy and just want to know, I want to share some insights on how much I invested into it and give you some guidance on what to consider. Now, of course, the cost will depend on what you already have and what kind of business you're planning on launching. My shop will have stationery items, fantasy themed cozy bookmarks, planners, memo pads, stickers and so on. You get the idea. Why those things? Well, because first of all, I like all things fantasy, magical and witchy, which I hope shows in my art so far, but also because I can make those things at home myself and not invest into stock that might not sell. It also gives me full control regarding how they look and feel, and if I don't like any aspect of it, I can change it with minimal cost. I just want to mention as well that what I've spent might not be achievable for you and that's okay. There are cheaper options I'll mention that could be considered to bring the cost down. You can also shop secondhand, look for discount codes or wait for seasonal sales. I am working full time and my online shop will be my side business for now. So I am in a place where I have steady income to support my investment, but I do realize some people might not be in the same position financially. The biggest investment will be your equipment. It's almost always equipment, unless you're investing in like an office lease or storage space, and even then some prices are lower than what you pay for a piece of machinery. The first purchase was my printer. I went with Epson EcoTank 2850. This cost me £279 at the time, and Epson did offer £50 cashback, but I was late in registering the thing, so I've missed it and I paid the full price. The printer is good for what I need it for, it prints beautifully on matte paper, which is my preferred type. It does however struggle with some glossy ones, so take into consideration what you want to make and on what medium to ensure your printer can support that. It also struggles with some thicker paper and can leave pizza roller marks on some types. You'll have to test what works on yours and what doesn't, as not all papers are made the same. Epson has cheaper models available, EcoTank 1810 retails now for around £120 for example. The second purchase was my Cricut Maker 3. That was £388. I went with the highest model because I didn't want to be limited to cutting thinner materials and I wanted something with enough power to cut through magnetic sheets. Maker 3 is the most expensive of all Cricuts but it will offer you the most creative options. Since I always like to try new things, I thought I'll invest in its potential. Some websites offer the machines with a bundle, which is what I got, so I could test the Cricut and see what it can do for me. If you only plan on doing cards, stickers and bookmarks, lower models would work fine too. I have seen people making stickers and cards on the Cricut Joy as well, which is the cheapest Cricut machine that currently retails around £190. This could also be an option if you just need the basic cut options that it offers. You can always look for a used one and save yourself some money that way. Or wait until sales kick in. The third purchase was the most important item in my arsenal, the one I used to create all of my art, iPad Pro 12.9. That was £1400. Now you might or might not need to purchase this piece of equipment, I know so many creators that use different tools to create their artwork, but I got used to the iPad and unfortunately my old one that I purchased a couple of years ago had an accident. So um, I had to cough up some monies for a new one. There are cheaper options. You can buy a drawing tablet that connects to your computer. You can buy a cheaper tablet, whether Apple or Android, that offers a great drawing experience or a laptop that has a stylus and a touch screen that allows you to draw on its surface. You can also do traditional art and scan it into your computer. Therefore, you won't have to spend any money on additional items. And if you do end up buying one, just make sure the piece of equipment works for you and your workflow, because the decent ones will set you back a couple hundred pounds, so you want to make sure it's a good investment. 
On top of my iPad, I currently own an XP pen drawing tablet that is connected to my laptop and I've used it only a handful of times and mainly when my iPad was broken. It just doesn't cut it for me and I don't even know why. There's just something about working on the iPad and having that touch capability at hand. And yes, some drawing tablets also have touch screens available, but when I travel, I don't want to take the laptop and the tablet and all of the power bricks that come with it. I just take my iPad and I'm good for almost anything. The cheaper options would be the standard iPad with Apple Pencil support, which would total roughly to £650, or you can go for Samsung 9 FE, which is similar price. Or again, find some used devices for even cheaper. Now the fourth thing would be a computer. Um, this is something that I already had and majority of you will too, so I won't be adding it to my cost list. However, if you are planning on doing some heavy tasks like a lot of 4K video editing and your computer or laptop is an older one or a lower end one, you might think of upgrading to save yourself some issues in the long run. If you just want something to run your business then I would think that whatever you already have at home will work just fine. So that's zero pounds. And that's all you need from the equipment category to run a stationary shop. The first drawing app would be Procreate. I started using Procreate as soon as I got my iPad a couple of years ago. At the time it cost 19.99 but it's cheaper now. I've watched a couple of tutorials and I was pretty much good to go. Very user friendly and easy for beginners with advanced functionality hidden for more curious or advanced ones. If your business relies on art, I would highly recommend it. Now the second app was Affinity Designer and at the time I spent £17 on the iPad version alone. Now I do come from drawing on my laptop and at the time my preferred program to use was Krita. If you don't know, Krita is a free drawing program similar to Photoshop that is available on your computer and I believe on Android tablets now as well. What I did like about it was the fact that it offered some vector functionality which I loved and missed in Procreate. As soon as I found out that Affinity Designer is available on iPad as a full application and not just the selection of chosen tools like Adobe Illustrator for example, I purchased it. And then when they released Affinity Suite 2, I have purchased the entire thing for PC and iPad and that was £89. No regrets there. Now the third one will be DaVinci Resolve and CapCut. They are both free video editing apps that allow you to create marketing content for your shop. Zero pounds. Mine cost me £118 and that was a 10 year purchase. As I don't plan on closing my shop anytime soon and I got a discount for taking the domain for 10 years, it worked pretty good for me. In my case it's £0 because it is not live yet, so I don't pay monthly fees just yet. And the last thing in this category will be a mailing list. And it's also zero pounds. I use MailerLite, I think I pronounce it correctly, which offers you a free plan up to a thousand subscribers. Now in this category, I got things like mats and blades for the Cricut machine. That was 20 pounds. I've bought a set of three mats since it doesn't come with any and a set of extra blades for thicker cuts since I am planning on making some magnetic bookmarks. You can get just one mat and skip the blades if you don't need them and that could come to less than 10 pounds for all. Since my Cricut came with an accessory pack, I didn't have to pay anything, so zero pounds. But if yours doesn't, then I would highly recommend getting a set as they do help with removing paper from the sticky mats and remove vinyl from tight corners. A decent set will set you back around eight pounds, but it's well worth it. The third item is my laminator. I spent 19 pounds on it. I wanted my bookmarks to be laminated and I also wanted to laminate my stickers and sticker sheets to make them waterproof and more resilient to scratches. 
I got one of those cheap laminators from Amazon that has cold and hot options and so far I haven't had any issues with it. If you don't need it, it will be zero cost, but I would recommend having one if you want your products to last a bit longer. With that obviously came the cost of laminating sheets and pouches. I spent overall £26 as I purchased standard matte ones but also some glossy and sparkly ones to try out. Fourth item would be the selection of paper cutters, the total of £16. I got myself one of those basic cutting plates for trimming my laminating sheets and pouches shipping labels and some other straight cuts where I don't need too much precision. I might invest in a proper guillotine eventually if I need to cut more than one or two pages at a time, but for now this will do. I got spare blades for it as well. I also purchased this corner cutter that has three different sizes. This was like £4 and I got it to see how I would use it and if it's worth investing in something more robust and efficient and also to check which size work best for me. The last cutting tool I got was this set of X-Acto knives with exchangeable blades for when my Cricut doesn't cut right through the design in a corner or something like that. It is more precise than using a pair of scissors and it was only like £3 or so. My current spend on paper is over £120 and counting. I think I have purchased like six different type of sticker papers. Some were recommended by other small business owners, some I found on Amazon and they had good reviews. I only like two of them so far. The first one is this thick matte double-sided photo paper that I use to make my bookmarks, trackers and planners, as well as backing paper for my memo pads. The other one is this sticker paper that I use to create my die cut stickers and sticker sheets. Um, I tried some glossy papers and only one of them turned out nice on my printer but it's really expensive so I won't be using it. Some just turned out horrible despite being recommended on videos from other small business owners. If you want to cut down on paper trial cost I would recommend ordering some samples or buying brands recommended by people who own the same or similar model of your printer. £26 so far and counting. I've ordered some cheap packs from The Works to try and see how my printer handles cards and I must say they turned out horrible. The print itself is good quality but because of the thickness of the paper the finished cards are left with pizza roll marks um, and they don't really fade away. If you'd like to make cards, make sure that you not only check the specification of your printer, but also remember that the weight of the paper itself might not be what's important. My printer specification states that it can handle thickness of up to 300 GSM, but in practice, a thicker softer paper will have the roller marks quite visible and sturdier paper, despite being thicker, will have no marks at all. I purchased this sample pack from Paper Spectrum after watching a really good review of my printer model and I will be testing it shortly for print quality and roll marks. The takeaway here is to make sure you test your paper before committing to buying larger quantities as it might not work the way you intended. So the total I've spent so far is just over £2,500. But remember, this includes my new iPad. If I wasn't so special while handling my camera around it, I could have still been using my old one and therefore would have spent just over £1,500, which is still higher than the total of the cheaper options I mentioned in this video, which comes to less than £1,100. Now what you have to remember is that paper, cardstock, laminating pouches and other consumables are going to be your regular expense if you own a stationery shop. But once you find the brand and type you like, the spending value will go down compared to when you're just testing and trying things out. The other two costs you will have to consider are packaging, so envelopes, boxes, tissue paper, fillers, bags, tapes, etc. The second expense is website or your shop's monthly fees. Now this is a category of extra investments I made for my business that might not apply to you at all. 
I've spent £500 on a used digital camera and accessories to record my videos. YouTube was planned to be an integral part of my business from the very beginning, so I wanted to ensure consistent quality. My phone was not the greatest and I couldn't rely on it and I also wanted to have something separate for my business, so I decided to invest and got Sony ZV-1 with memory card and extra batteries. The second item I purchased was this tripod camera stand. I spent £29 on it. This tripod has top view angle, which I use for my tutorial videos, but it can easily be transformed into a front view in seconds. I wanted something that won't break the bank, but will offer some flexibility and different angles for recording. I would totally recommend this one. The third item was my softbox light set and that was £52. This also offers me some flexibility of recording in the evenings or when there is no good sunlight that I can rely on. And since I live in the UK, this is the case like 90% of the time. The fourth item that I would include is IKEA storage solution and that was £262 for the entire set. Once my business started taking over our living room, we decided to find a solution to contain the mess a little bit. Lastly, I learned from my mistakes and spent £12 on this iPad cover. It comes in my favourite colour and hopefully will protect my main and most expensive work tool from any damage I would otherwise inflict on it. There are some smaller expenses for convenience like my £8 card reader that speeds up the process of importing footage from my camera or a five pound laptop tray that I use to tilt my iPad when I draw. Overall, I would say I invested around 3,400 pounds into my business before it even launched, and I still most likely spend another two to 300 pounds before I even see any return. So if you are planning on starting your stationary business in 2024, I hope this gave you a good overview of what to expect where you can compromise or find cheaper options and what items and services to consider. Obviously, the overall cost will depend on what you already own and if you need any extra equipment or materials. This is it for today, but let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Have a great time creating and I will see you in the next one. Bye.